If this is your first time here, so glad that you're here. And what we're going to be talking about is God, like really who God is. Can we love a God that we don't know? Um, can we have great faith in a God that maybe we don't have a lot of information on? Or maybe some misconceptions of who he is. There's times in your life that you're going through a difficult time. And because you're going through a difficult time, I've seen a lot of people do this big mistake. They start blaming God for the difficult time. Just because you're going through a difficult time doesn't mean that God did it. God is your answer. He is not your problem. But the problem is if you see God as your problem, he cannot be your answer. So if you're sick, God is not the one that made you sick. He's the one that provides your healing. If you're bound today, you say, man, I'm really stuck. I, I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm in spiritual chains. See, Jesus is not the one that puts you in those chains. Jesus is the one that will set you free. If your relationships aren't working and there's a lot of division, Jesus is not, or God's not the one that caused the division in your relationship. He's the one that wants to bring reconciliation to your relationship. God is not your problem. He is your answer. So in James chapter 1 verse 16, it starts off, we're going to read this portion of scripture 16 through 18, because we're in a series and the title of the series is God is good. Say with me. God is good. And I want you to recognize that everything that's good comes from God. And then we're going to make a statement that everything that's bad does not come from God. And it's going to be important for you to get that because I want you to have the right concept about God, the right perspective about God, so you can have a great relationship with God. So in James chapter 1, verse 16 through 18, it says this, don't be misled. What does it mean that we can't be misled? My dear brothers and sisters, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father. The scripture is saying something really simple. Whatever is good and perfect. That word perfect doesn't mean, this is what it means. It means lacking nothing. So when something's perfect, it doesn't lack anything. So when God gives you a gift, it's a full gift. It's complete. It meets the, the, it meets the need. But it goes on to say this, um, from your father, from God, our father, who created all the lights in the heavens. This week, we're not going to cover the lights in the heaven. But all it's saying is that God that created all the lights in the heaven, he's the one that's good. And all it's saying is that God is all powerful. To have light, you need to have some power. You know, and some, there are times when we have storms or big winds here in this area. And one of the concerns we have when those winds hit is the power going to go out. Because when there's no power, there's no light. And what this scripture is actually saying is that God, that God that every good and gift, perfect gift comes from him, is all powerful as well. He never changes or casts a shift in that shadow. He, ch he chose to give birth to us by giving us a true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. You are God's prized possession. The focus of all creation is you as an individual. You need to know this, that God loves you and he cares about every detail of your life. And believe in that can help you start receiving some of the breakthrough and some of the help that you need. Is there anybody here who needs some help in life? So we can be misled. I want to talk about that just for a second. Satan uses deception about even our, about our perspective about God to lead us away from God, to lead us away from God. You could be so led away from him that you could become an atheist or you, become, you could become an agnostic saying, I'm not sure God exists. Where did all that doubt start from? Because the reality is every single little child is born with faith. They believe that there's a God. But as we go through life, if we don't watch it, we can be misled that there's no God, that he doesn't love you, that he doesn't care, and that he's not all-powerful. 
So sin uses deception to lead us away from God and his people. In 2 Corinthians 11, 3, it says this, but now I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's clever lies, your thoughts may be corrupted. Now, when our thoughts are corrupted, this is what happens. And you may lose your single-hearted devotion, devotion and pure love for God. So when our thoughts are corrupted with doubt and unbelief or even wrong thinking, this is what it stops. It stops us or it could hinder us from having single-hearted devotion and pure love for Christ. Does anybody here love Christ? Is there anybody, like I'm single-hearted, devoted to Christ, devoted to God? And the only way that can happen is if you know God. If right now you're saying, Pastor, I'm not single, I don't have a single-hearted devotion to God, or, or right now I don't know if I love Christ, I might know about him, it's okay. You just need to know him better. And I, I pray by the end of this series that you'll know who God is. And today, I really want to just hit this subject that God is good. Now, Satan wants to deceive us and destroy our single-hearted devotion to God. He started this with the first person on earth, the first couple on earth, Adam and Eve. Satan lied to Eve about what? About God. Satan lied to Eve about what? About God. This is, look at this. Let's go back to that day in Genesis 3, 4. Now, Satan is hanging around this tree. Um, Jesus, God told Adam and Eve not to eat of this tree. If they eat of this one tree, they'll surely what? They would die. So don't participate in that because if you participate in that, it will not go well with you. See, the Bible is not here to take away your fun. The Bible is here to protect you, to make sure you enjoy a full life that he has planned out for you. So he goes, so now Eve said, Adam go. I mean the serpent says to Eve, is it true you can't eat of any of the trees in the garden? And then she says, um, no, that's not really true. We could eat of all the trees of the garden. It's just that one tree in the middle of the garden. Because if we eat of that tree, God warned us that we would die. Now, Sam begins to speak now. He goes, you won't die. Like, you could live however you want. There won't be no consequences. Look what it says. The serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be opened. As soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. So he tells her, you know what the problem here is, baby? You, I mean, you, you're really short-sighted, and realistically, you're old-fashioned, and God is not... See, you know what, God, you know what the real trip in here is? God's trying to stop you from knowing what he knows. What he was saying is, God's not really good, and he's not really for you. He's just trying to stop you from having a good time. And we think about that when we have teenagers in the house, and they want to do wrong stuff. And you say, hey, don't go there. And they say, man, I want to do what I want to do. I, you live your life. Let me live my life. You know, this is what, this is what they're this is what they're saying. I, I want to do it the way I want to do it. And it's not that you're trying to stop them from having fun. You're trying to protect them. Some say protect them. So when God gives us instructions, it's never to hurt us. It's, it's there to help us live the good life. How many want to live the good life? Well, follow God's instructions. But he says, nah, you won't die. The, the truth is you're going to know both good and evil. The scripture says the woman was what? Convinced. She saw the fruit. She saw the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. Not everything that's beautiful and delicious is good for you. Isn't it true that the stuff that's beautiful and delicious actually is not good for you? Right? It's all that pretty food. The stuff that doesn't look that pretty, like broccoli, is good for you. But that cake with all that frosting or that Twinkie looks so good. Right? But, but the, the scripture says she saw that it was beautiful and looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she was thinking, Satan is right. 
God is trying to withhold something from me. But the reality was, listen to what Satan offered her. This is what I'm offering you. You're going to be like God, both knowing good and what? Evil. The truth was, she already knew good. And if he dissected her, her, his statement, she would have realized, I already know good. All he's offered me is evil. Because I already know good. Well, how do you know everything was good around her? This is how we know. Because the Bible says that everything that God created was very good. So we serve a good God that creates very good things. So God is very good, he does very good, and he creates very good things. And Genesis 1.31, it said this, Then God looked over all he had made. Then God looked over what? And look what he said about it. And he saw that it was very good. He saw it was what? So everything he created for mankind is good. This is what we're saying. We're making a major statement. God is good, and everything he has for you is good. And I want you to build that up, because if you're seeking after God, the end result will be good. And if you're listening to Satan, well, how do I listen to Satan? He always comes with delicious offers that look really pretty. Is there something in your life right now that looks beautiful and delicious and you're developing an appetite, but you know it did not come from God, it's coming from Satan. And if it's coming from Satan, it's got, not going to lead to good. It's going to lead to what? Evil. So the word good, every, everything was good. It's a Greek word, tob, and what it means, it was pleasant. It was excellent. So everything he created was very valuable. It means happiness. How many want some happiness in your life? There was, it was prosperous. It was kind. It was what, was what is right. It was beneficial. It was morally good. It was the best. It was beautiful. It was love. It was joy. It was wealth. This word tob means all of that. How many want some love? How many want the best, right? How many want prosperity? How many want some kindness and what is right and what's beneficial and morally good? And what he's saying is, when I made the earth, I made it, and everything I looked at was this. It was Tob. So, so Satan was telling Eve, this is what's going to happen. The reason God doesn't want you to eat of the tree, because... He doesn't want you to know, he doesn't want you to know both tob and the word of evil is ra. Someone say ra. Now ra sounds evil. Ra. Like, it sounds like a word that they would say in an Egyptian movie where they're trying to do some kind of witchcraft to open up a, a cave or something. Boo, blah, 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 ra. So saying what's telling Eve, you see, God's, God's trying to keep you from knowing both, both Tob and Ra. Now, she already knew Tob, but she was fallen that she needed to know Ra. Now, God didn't want her to know Ra because he wanted just good. You know, in heaven, there's going to be no Ra. It's just going to be Tob. How many want some good in your life? What is pleasant? What is excellent? What is valuable? Serve God and you'll start seeing it begin to come to pass in your life. So the word evil, Ra, means this, unpleasant, bad, pain, misery, unhappiness, of no value, worse, getting worse, unkind, hurt, sadness, immorality, distress, Wrong, adversity, adversity, injury, sickness, calamity, sorrow, trouble. So where did all this evil begin? It began with a tempting offer. See, 
We have little boys and little girls that grow up in our house, and they're so innocent and they're so cute. But I do know this, that just like Eve was tempted, every little boy and every little girl is going to face the same tree. They're going to face the same deceiver, and he's going to offer them this deception. And he, the deception is that you can receive the goodness of God through this pleasure that I'm going to give you right now. You know that thing that's missing in your life? You know what you're missing? You're missing some raw. And, and could it be that after a while you get addicted to raw? Some of you ladies in this room, you don't, you're not even attracted to a man of God. If they're not evil and they're not a gangster and they're not they beat you and abuse you just a little bit, they're not man enough for you. So it doesn't matter where you go. You keep picking the same kind of guys because you develop an appetite for the raw. And this is what God wants to tell you. That temporary pleasure that you're getting is going to lead to long-term pain, long-term misery. It's going to kill you. It's going to make you sick. It's going to ruin your family. It's not going to be pleasant in the future. So don't be deceived thinking that I could live however I want to live and I'm going to still experience the tobe of God. But how did he convince her? He convinced her into thinking that what you're looking for is not in God. It's in the club. It's with that guy. It's in that lifestyle. The goodness is not here in the church. The goodness is not with God. It's somewhere else. Big fat lie. The happiest people in the world are those that have a restored relationship with the God that created heaven and earth. And Jesus came to restore the goodness of God in your life. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Let's say it one more time. God is good all the time. God is good. I don't know what I'm saying, but I, I'm getting better than last week. Is God good? You know, this would be a little, this would be a, a real easy teaching for little kids. This would be teaching. God is good. Devil bad. <laughs> and some of us right now, we're older and we can't get that little big, that little lesson. God is good. Devil bad. We got to think about this because some, you know what the Bible says in the last days? Good will be called evil and evil will be called good. And it's crazy. We're living in a society that if you're living for God, you're considered bad. And if you're living to, with the morals of our society, you're good. But no matter how much you convince that that tree is good and it's delicious and the devil could convince anybody. And you know what I was thinking? That was probably the same lie he told, Satan told, they told Eve was the same lie he probably told one third of the angels in heaven to follow him. Like God's trying to withhold something good from you. He's trying to withhold blessing from you, knowledge from you. God's not trying to withhold good from you. He's trying to withhold bad from you. That's why the Bible says in the Lord's Prayer, lead me not into temptation, me, but deliver me from all evil. God's not trying to take you to a tempting place. He's trying to take you to a good place. But you cannot get to a good place if you keep letting Satan convince you that the thing that you've been searching for the goodness of God it, it, that he's been offering is still going to lead you to good. It's not. Someone say, it's not. See? So what is the truth about God? We don't say and say, well, God's trying to withhold good from you. Well, we get that truth from the word. But what is the truth about God? And I want you to just get this in your spirit. This is the truth about God. God is good. And 
I want you to get that. In, I want you to get that, that you wake up in the morning and just say, God, you're good. And the reason, if you could start believing that God is good, you could start receiving the goodness of God. But if you believe that God's against you, why are you causing all these problems in my life? Because I didn't cause those problems. So let's, let's talk about this for a second. But God is good. Now we're going to talk about where does bad come from? All right. In James 1.17, let's read that again. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father. So whatever is good comes from where? Where does it come from? Everything that's good, the breath in your lungs, that's good. It came from God. A nice sunny day that you get in a tan out there on the beach, where'd that come from? Came from God. The brain that you got that you're able to use on a daily basis to even talk yourself out of God, who gave you that brain? It was God. The family that you have that you enjoy sometimes. The enjoyable times came from God. And all that division and all that fighting came from the devil. It's not God. So we're going to talk about where does good come But good comes from God. Where does good come from? So that means I want to have a relationship with God because he's a source of peace. He's a source of joy. He's a source of power. He's a source of healing. He's a source of happiness. He's a source of peace. He's a source of all that I want in life that's good. God is my source. You guys get that? So when you have a relationship with God, you know God is good. You're full of God. And if you're full of God, you're full of good. And you know what happens when you're full of God, you're full of good? You become a source of good. People want to say, how do I get some of that stuff? I go, just hang out with me. Let me introduce you to my good God. I was bound bad, but now I'm free good. I was sick bad. Now I'm healed good. I was depressed bad, but now I have hope good. God, I used to be full of hate bad, but now I'm full of love good. And that change started with my relationship with Jesus Christ, the source of good. See, good comes from God. And everything he created wasn't just good, it was very good. See, when you follow Jesus, when you follow him, because you don't have to follow Jesus. You can follow your own crazy thinking. Come on, we got some crazy thinkers up in here. That's how you end up all messed up, all jacked up, all crazy, all up in jail, clink, clink, clink. <laughs> you have to think crazy before you end up with those crazy results. See, some of you guys, you need to look at the relationship you have around you because if everybody's crazy, you too are crazy. Man, my friends are crazy. I'm glad I'm not like them. Yeah, you are. You're just like them. So now, look at this. Now, if you follow God... And you learn how to love him. And I, it says, the reason I want to go where God is going, having us go through this, this whole series that God is good, God wants to introduce himself to a, a, of who he really is and not let the world define who he is. But I want to introduce myself. This is for my word. Everything that good comes from me. I want to show you how good I am because I want to give you my good so you can start loving me. See, I'm not here to start, try to st change your behavior. I'm here to change your heart. Because, see, if you have a sin that you keep going to, it's just that you love that more and you love God. When you get to the point that you love God and his goodness, those things aren't as appealing because I don't need that anymore because I'm getting my fulfillment, I'm getting my peace, I'm getting my joy, I'm getting my prosperity from a different source. 
Is that right? So good comes right. So you follow Jesus. You follow God. God's going to work everything out for good. Look at Romans 8.28. Look. And we know. Someone say, and we know. With great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, I'm introducing you to God. He's deeply concerned about you. And you might be thinking, I don't even know God like that. But God knows you like that. You say, I don't, I don't even know if I believe all the stuff you're saying. I'm, right now I want to go to Denny's. And you could be thinking all these crazy thoughts and not even, you could be pushing God away and God says, I'm still deeply concerned about you. Your lack of interest in me does not stop my, my interest in you. I'm deeply concerned about the thoughts you have in your heart because it's leading you away from me. It's leading you away from good. It's leading you away from your purpose. It's leading you away from your destiny. It's leading you away from success. Don't let it lead you away. I'm good. Some of you guys are using the wrong words for stuff. Like that high, man, that was some good stuff. It's so good it's destroying your brain cells. It's so good it's putting you in prison. It's so good it, it causes you to lose your job. It's so good it causes you to stop being a good father and a good mother. That's how good it is. A little high is not good. It's destroying you. It's just a little temptation to ruin your life and, say, and take you away from good. Look, but follow Jesus. Look at this. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. So this is what God is saying. When you love me and you're busy fulfilling your purpose in life, follow my lead. I'll cause whatever. See, I'm not saying that you won't have some struggles in life. I'm not saying you won't have some challenges and difficulties and losses in this life because you will. You'll have some failures. You're going to have some letdowns. You're going to have some people that stab your back. There, there's abusers in this life. There's bad in this world. But what God is saying, no matter what bad comes your way, if you just get focused on me and my relationship with you, I will work it all out for good and every good and perfect gift come from me. Don't you get focused on what they said, what she said, what they're going through. Focus on me. I'm bigger than the economy. I'm bigger than your haters. I'm bigger than your financial problems. I'm bigger than your sickness. I'm a good God. I'll cause all of it to turn out for a testimony on how good I am. So you got to be that crazy Christian. Like, man, you're going through a lot, man. I know, but I know this. It's all going to turn out for good. Well, how do you know that? Because God caught for me. See, I, I, my response, I just love God. I worship God every Sunday. I wake up in the morning and I just say, God is good. I read his word. I'm about, I'm about my father's business. I'm here serving the needs of the community. I'm loving some people. I volunteer in the church. I'm leading people to Jesus. I'm sharing my testimony. And it's God's job to work everything out. Everything else will work out for good. I know I just got fired from my job, but that's going to work out for good too. It's going to work out for good. I don't know how, but that's not my business. That's God's business. When my daughter got sick, she's in a hospital with cancer, dying, according to the doctors. I got to say right there, I don't know how it's all going to work out, but it's going to work out for good. Now she's up here worshiping, singing worship to God with a testimony. It's all going to work out for good. My mom died a couple years ago, but that's going to work out for good too. Because one day I'm going to be with her for eternity. God's working everything out for good. It's all 
good. I'm going to work it out for good. That in the Hebrew, in the, in the Greek, it's a word, it's, it's, it's not tob, it's agathos. So I'm going to work everything out for agathos for you. Someone say agathos. If it's not agathos, it's not God. That means excellent, useful, beneficial, joyful, pleasant. You know what that means? My happiest days, my most fulfilled days, my best days are behind me. They're ahead of me. I'm going through some challenges right now, but I thank God that I serve a good God and everything he does is very good. Someone's depression is leaving right now because you had too much faith in circumstance and people. Someone has a broken heart in here and you were thinking, if they would just come back, I'd be good. And God says, nah, they don't even appreciate you the way I appreciate you. If you just come back to me, you'd be good. Hallelujah. So when God calls good, there has to be like a reference, like, how to, like what's the standard of good? The standard of good is how long it lasts. See, some of you guys think good is, bad is good because you experience some pleasure, but it's a fleeting pleasure. Something that's real good lasts. You can't say you got a good product and you're selling a product, and by the time they get out of the, the parking lot, it breaks. It's not good because it doesn't last. And all the devil offers you is a bite of a fruit. But that taste, even if it, maybe that fruit tasted real good. But the damage that it did was long-lasting. A little bite for long-term evil. It's not worth it. Man, the sex was good. It's not worth it to sell your soul and your future and your integrity. you rather live a pure life with God and let God give you the right type of sex. Oh, Lord, why you got to talk about sex? <laughs> That's all. We talk about it in our society nowadays. We better talk about it in the church. What's right sex? <laughs> All right, we're going to get into that. Everything outside, uh, husband and wife being married, committed, is outside boundary sex. It's called lust. Ooh, it got hard on that. Just I got hard right here. You know why? Because sex is a god to many people. It, it's such a god to you that you'd be willing to give up God for your sex life. You've made your sex life your identity instead of your identity being a child of God that loves God. And I'll give up whatever pleasure to serve God and get the pleasure that's right. See, God wants you to have pleasure because good means pleasure. But he wants you to have the right pleasure that doesn't hurt you, that doesn't separate from God, doesn't separate from your purpose, doesn't separate you from your rightful identity in Christ. Okay. Okay. So now, good. Someone say good. God is good. Devil bad. So what's the, where does bad come from? Only two sources, and they both start, start with S. Where does bad come from? Two sources, they both start with what? S. It's like, S sounds like Satan. But the first one is Sin. You know what that means? Bad comes from sin. You know what sin is? Wrong choices. Corrupt desires within us that lead us astray. Um, and so sin comes from, where does bad come? It comes from people sinning and sinful people. Where does bad come from? People sinning and sinful people. It wasn't God that beat you. It was your boyfriend that beat you. 
wasn't God that made you drunk and drunk drive and you got in a car accident and now you have to pay a $5,000 fine and they pull your license. That was you. And I've learned this, that if we could start taking personal responsibility for our choices, we could start turning bad into good. Stop blaming everybody, including God. Take personal responsibility. I don't like the way my life is. It's my fault. Woo-wee. It's getting hot up in here. Galatians 6, 7 says this. Do not be fooled. Do not be what? You cannot cheat God. People harvest only what they plant. What do people harvest? So what he's saying is you get back what you put in. If they plant to satisfy their sinful selves, their sinful selves will bring them ruin. So when I give in to my sinful lower pleasures and my lust, this is what it's going to bring me back, ruin. It's going to ruin my life. It's going to ruin my relationship with God. It's going to ruin my heart, my body. But if, you, if they plant to please the Spirit, they will receive eternal life from the Spirit. All I'm saying is this, the Scripture's saying, I'm not saying it. Sin always ends in ruin. And following God always ends in fullness of life, eternal life. Most of the bad that we see in our lives is self-inflicted or others inflicted. Self-inflicted and what? That's where the bad comes from. So where does bad come from? Sin. What? Where does sin start? With sinful people. Or with people sinning and sinful people. Source number two. I already told you that one. Satan. Satan wants to convince us that the pursuit of our lustful desires will somehow produce the goodness of God. But it only ends in destruction. And we're getting hit with this every single day on, on media. We're getting hit nonstop with conversations that are ungodly and corrupt. And you know when you expose yourself to all of that, you start acting like them, talking like them, and desire what they desire. Some of you guys, some of us in this room, you got a cussing problem. And the reason you got a cussing problem, because all you've been listening to is cussing people. Well, <laughs> he thought I was going to say some bad words. I was like, okay, pa- okay, pastor, come on, bring it. But it's because you've been exposed to that. And Satan has this, this media to set up to expose you to his values, to expose you to the world, to expose you to corruption. And if you don't watch it, you're digesting that. And this is what's happening. You're becoming what you eat. So it comes from saying, in, J- in John 10, 10, it says, the thief only comes in order to steal and kill and destroy. Hmm. But this is what's good about this. Look what the Bible says. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full, till it overflows. What God is saying, the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy your life, but I've come to give you an enjoyable life. I've come to give you a good life. I've come to give you a powerful life, and it won't it'll last forever. Come on, what I'm ready to give you is better than a temporary high. I'll give you a high that will last forever. Why don't you come to me? This is good stuff because it comes from a good God. See, if you don't believe that God has more good for you than what you're tasting out there in the world, you'll never come to God. Because I'm going to end it with the, oh, oh. devil tried to trip me right there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Satan. All right, there we go. I'm going to give you just two just major statements as we end this. Believing that good comes from God is the key to receiving the goodness from God. I believe good comes from God. You know what I receive from God? Good. This might be a tough situation, but I know God's going to work it all out for good. And I want you to get this too, that God's gifts are, are gifts. Don't be deceived that you have to earn 
the gifts. That's why it's called a gift. And it's a reward. Say every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. What he's saying is the good, the, good, the good I have for you, you don't have to earn it. I'll give it to you because it's a gift. I want to do good to you. Eternal life is a gift. Forgiveness and righteousness is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. The, come on, freedom is a gift. Peace is a gift. Joy is a gift. Provision is a gift. Wisdom is a gift. Prayer is a gift. His word is a gift. Healing is a gift. Well, God is saying everything that's good is a gift. So stop trying to earn it. Let me just give it to you today. God is good. He wants to give me some gifts. Imagine all these gifts he wants to give you and you're over trying to earn them. Well, how much do I have to pay for that? Like I said, my son already paid for it. Did you hear what he said right before he died? He goes, it is finished. He goes, all of it has been paid for. All you got to do is receive the gift by believing, not by doing. So I said, receive the gift. And I'll end it with this. All of this starts from the beginning again. Eve gets deceived by Satan. Satan tells her God's not good. He's trying to keep you from knowing good and evil. The truth was she already knew good. All he did was introduce her to evil. And every single one of us have been introduced to evil. And God is really concerned about you as a person. He loves you so much. And he hates seeing you separated from the good, his goodness. He doesn't want you depressed, full of anxiety, stressed out, in major lack. And it seems like everything you're touching is just ending up in ruin. It seems like it's just the same old cycle. So God brings you here today to let you know that I'm good and everything I have for you is very good. But it all starts with receiving a free gift that you can receive right now. And how do you receive it? By believing. How do you receive it? By what? Believe. How do you receive the gifts of God? Just believing. Not by doing. God's not saying, hey, show up to church eight times before you can get saved. Because I want to make sure you mean it. So I'm not going to waste all my gifts on people who don't appreciate it. You know what God says? I love you. You come with your pain. You come with your hurt. You come with your difficulties. I'm deeply concerned about you. I care about every detail in your life. Others don't care, but I care. And I know it may be hard for you to start receiving care and love because so many people have let you down. But I just pray that you use a little faith. Some say little faith. The little belief that you have today says so start receiving the good that God has for you. That good, Tob, was joy, peace, prosperity. It was power, excellence, pleasure, what is pleasant, what is right. I want to give you that now and forever. And then what I want to do is fill you up with my presence, my goodness. So you could go out there and give some goodness to others. We got a world that's so evil. We need some, come on, God people that are full of God's goodness to go out there and give some forgiveness and love and all this division and craziness. Let's do it. Today's your day. So how do you receive the life that God has for you? Jesus came to pay the price for all the evil we've done. Yes, evil ends in death. But God says, I never, Jesus says, I never did the evil, but I'm going to go ahead and pay the price for all the evil to remove the evil from your life forever. God wants to give you a new start. You can be forgiven today, but all you have to realize is that God, I, right now I'm making a choice. I'm ready. I want to surrender my life to you. I want, to have, I want my relationship to re, be reconciled with you. I need the goodness of God in my life today. And you can make that choice. Like Eve made a choice to eat of the tree, you can make a choice to leave the tree. So I'm ready. Help me, Lord. And you know how you come? You come the way you are. You don't fix your life and make it good. 
You come the way you are with all the bad, with all the mistakes. And then God says, watch this. I'm going to work all this out for good. It's not time to kill yourself. It's not time to give up. It's not time to throw in a towel. It's time for you to choose a new God in your life. It's time for you to forgive the people that hurt you. Or maybe some of us need to realize, God, I've been blaming you. Forgive me for blaming you. You're not my problem. You're my answer. You're my solution. You love me. You're deeply concerned. He's concerned about your future. He's concerned about your relationships. Let's all stand up. and I'm going to pray in a second. But if you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God. I feel like I'm Eve, like I've been separated from the goodness of God. I've experienced a lot of pain and hurt in my life. But I want some change in my life. I want to be saved. And I want you to think about this. That only those that have Christ have eternal life. Someone say eternal life. Eternal life, you know what it is? Fullness of life. Someone say fullness of life. See, apart from Christ, there's something missing. No video game can fill it. No party can fill it. No material possession can fill that. No title at your job can ever fulfill what's missing in your heart. Because what you're missing is the goodness of God. He's the one that can take out the anger, can take out the hurt. He can take out the misery. Why don't you try it? The scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. You're one decision away from receiving a new life, a new beginning. And God is not just a God up there in heaven. He's a God that affects your earth right now, your life right now. And what he wants to do is come into your heart and change you. He's the only one who can do it, give you new desires, give you love where there's been hate and anger. He's the one that can set you free from whatever you've been trying to set yourself free from. But I'm going to ask you a real serious question. If today were your last day on earth, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Where you'd spend eternity? Will you be with Jesus or will you be separated from Jesus? And being separated from Jesus, you already know what that is. It's raw, pain, hurt, suffering. And some of you guys are thinking, man, my life is a whole bunch of raw right now. Pain, suffering, and hurt. And all I'm saying is it doesn't need to end that way. Let's turn it around right now. Give your life to Jesus. He's your savior. He's your deliverer. He can restore you. He can make you new. But you got to say yes. When I count to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I've been separated from God. I know it. I can feel like the evil in my life, the pain, the hurt, the suffering. It's just nonstop cycle. But I want change today. I want Jesus to save me. I want a new life. I want eternal life. I want to be forgiven. Today's my day. When I count to three, or maybe you're a Christian and you backslid by a little temptation. Go, Come, eat of the fruit. Doesn't it look good? And you ate it. You said, man, I, got, I went through a loop for a couple months, a couple years. I need to come back home. You need to come back home. You tasted everything the world has for you, and you're still empty. Come back home, son. Come back home, daughter. God loves you. He just wants to turn your life around. Today's your day. One, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hands off this building. When I say three, say, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to see the goodness of God in my life. I need to turn around. One, two, when I say three, quickly raise your hands off this building. Don't hesitate. This is your moment. Publicly. Let everybody know, I want to live for Jesus. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. It's time to come back home. Anybody else over there? I see the hand. I see the hand. Come on, it's time to come back home. I see the hand in the back. Anybody else? Anybody else? Way in the back over there. I want those. I see the hand. Proud of you. Come on, I see the hand over there. I want those to raise their hand. Come on, there's still somebody else that today's your day. This is your turnaround. It's not one more time around the block. You don't even know if you're going to make it one more time around the block. Same, I will try to take you out one more time around the block. Today's your day to surrender it all. You can feel God speaking to your heart. I want those to raise their hands. I want you to come forward. Will you give me the privilege of praying with you? I know this is a big step, but you're saying I'm leaving my whole life behind and I want to follow Jesus. Come on, if you raise your hand, come forward. Even if you didn't raise your hands, I need change in my life. I need a new beginning in my life. I need love back in my life. I need, I need God's goodness back in my life. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there, go up there with you. Anybody else? Come on, let's come on up. Come on. 
Receive the goodness of God. It all starts with a decision. Come on, you can get on the right track. You got off the track. It's time to get back on the right track. Give the Lord a hand for just reaching his soul. Come on, ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. There's still somebody out. Is it? All right. Let's pray. This is what we're going to do. You've made a step of faith. I'm getting back on track. I need God. I need forgiveness. I need a turnaround. I need healing in my heart. I need a breakthrough today. Uh, you know, I got to stop. There's somebody else that's out there supposed to be up here. And everything you heard today has spoken to your heart. And it's almost like a war going on in your heart and your mind. Like, I know I need that. But there's a voice telling you, you can't do it. And this is what God's telling you. I'll help you. I'm not expecting you to do it. I want to help you. Who's supposed to be up here right now? I want you to leave your seat. You ask your neighbor, are you supposed to be up there? Because right now, there's somebody right now that God is fighting for your soul. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. She's up here. There's somebody else. Come on. There's somebody else. You're supposed to be up here tonight. Today, I mean, this is your day. You're supposed to be up here surrendering all to God. And something's trying to hold you back. There, Satan is speaking to you. Not today. Tomorrow. Don't let him convince you. Don't let him trick you. Come up here right now. Come on. Come up here with your hurt. Come up here with your pain. Come up here with your broken marriage. Come up here with your difficulty. Come up here. offering you religion. We're offering you a good God. Proud of you. Proud of you. Let's do this. Anybody else coming? There's still someone coming. We'll wait all night. Come on. We'll wait all until night. It's morning, but we'll wait all night. Captain. Come on. Someone's eternity is being changed. Families being changed. Our minds are being changed. Habits are being changed. Hearts are being transformed. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I'm proud of you guys. It takes a real man and woman to live for God. Let's pray. Repeat after me. I want you to repeat after me these words. It only matters if it means something to you in your heart. But give your life to Jesus today. There has to be a time that you're done with the evil. I'm done with it. I want the goodness of God in my life. I know living for God is not the easiest thing in the world, but it's the most worthwhile thing in the world. It's worthwhile. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you're a good God. I receive your joy, your peace, your forgiveness. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross to pay the price for all the evil that I've done. Set me free from all bad habits, addictions. Fill my heart with your love, with your joy, with your power, with your Holy Spirit. From this day forward, I make up my mind. I'm following you, Jesus, for the rest of my life. I wanna be on fire, full of your power full of your love, full of your goodness. Use me, Lord, to give the goodness to others, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. I'm born again. I've recommitted my life to you. In Jesus' name, 
I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. I want to pray for every single person that's here. Let's pray. Let's get your information. Your next step is starting at the way. And after that, we got prospering at the way, then freedom at the way. Continue. Have a great afternoon. If you've not um, signed up for the women's advance, I mean women's um, conference, sign up now. We have, they have still they have limited seating. Don't be left out. We got limited seating for that. So get your spot. Lock it in. God's ready to do something great in your life. You need prayer for healing, for breakthrough, for whatever. Come up here. We'll pray for you. God bless you. Love you. Remember this. God is good.